Hi guys, so today I'm here with Nick from the Scrum Line and I'm a huge fan of Nick's work because he makes everything look very spectacular and amazing <laughs> uh, and he's very creative and um, I'm super excited to be asking him some questions for you today. So uh, Nick, thank you for being here with me. No worries, thank you for having me on. Um, so the first thing I wanted to ask you was, I well, I read that you were uh, part of the Navy and then you also worked a bit with in yeah. fitness and all of these things. So from there, I was just asking, I just wanted to know where did the whole graphic design and baking and food come in? Um, so I studied graphic design as soon as I left high school. Um, and then I went and worked as a graphic designer. So then uh, after I finished that up I kind of realized it wasn't really for me I had like a bit of a moment where I wanted to do something different and be like more active and on my feet rather than at a desk so I went and like went into the navy for seven weeks that's how long I lasted before I discharged and um, I went in as a navy cook because I've always loved cooking and I've always loved food so I left that, went and traveled in Europe. Um, and then after I got back from Europe, I went and worked in a bakery. So that's kind of, that's, that's been the journey up until now. And whereabouts in Europe did you, uh, did you live and you work? Um, so I, I just traveled in Europe. So I, I went to like, I did like a contiguous tour. I was literally just speaking to my husband about it downstairs at dinner. Um, and I, I did like a Kentucky tour. It was my first time traveling on my own and I was really, really scared, but it ended up being okay. And I went to France, the UK. I went to Amsterdam. Uh, actually, yeah, I went to the Netherlands. Um, and I, I think I went to like Spain and I went to Greece, just a whole bunch of different countries. And then I spent my last two weeks in Paris and that kind of sparked this obsession with pastries and that that's kind of the reason why I decided to start the scram line mm -hmm. and uh so yeah. okay so then you started the scram line after you went to Europe yeah so I, I got back from Europe I started working in a bakery started learning about pastries and then I started the channel as mm -hmm. is, is a lot yeah. of what you was that what you posted on your channel influenced by things that you learned to do in in the bakery or was that more of yes it was so I actually I worked at a bakery that was just cupcakes so I, I mean I started the scram line as I actually started the scram line doing lots of different stuff because I was a huge fan of food blogs to begin with and then I discovered YouTube and I discovered Laura Vitale and I started kind of doing, you know, similar stuff to what she was doing because I thought it looked like loads of fun. Um, and then I thought I should do cupcakes. So I went a bit berserk for a couple of years <laughs> doing cupcakes. Yeah. And yeah. did you, or did you start full, full on as in, did you start as knowing that, that you wanted it to be your job or did you kind of first do it as a hobby and then it became something more? Um, so it, it did start off as a, um, hobby, um, and, uh, I actually was at the bakery for about two years before I left and I went and traveled in the U S. Um, I'd always wanted to get into being a YouTuber and, and creating content, but it can be difficult when you have a full-time job, you can't just leave. You have to find success doing that job before you can do it full time. And so I went to the U S just around the time that I started doing cupcakes. And I actually met these people from a company called taste made. Mm -hmm. They saw the cupcakes I was making. They asked me to start creating content for them. And that's kind of how I started doing this full time. Yeah, yeah. no, that's really cool. Cause I, for me, it's yeah. like, I've always just the whole time I've done this, I've always had, I've always been studying and that's kind of been my main job. So first oh, it was that's awesome. my, I started in high school and then I, yeah. you know, I did my bachelor and then I did my master and I took breaks in between. So sometimes yeah. I struggle with, um, well, you know, just posting not enough. And then I have to remind myself that it's different for me because it's, it's a hobby. Um, yeah. 
is is the posting was the posting for you like the irregular posting because you were studying or was it something different like because for me i found moments while i'm doing this job that i found a little like i felt a little bit unmotivated which can be common or was it mostly because you were like a student i think it's a bit of both because you know as a student yeah. you're like you really want to enjoy being in university and your study yeah. is always your priority at least that's how it's been with me where i'm always um yeah it's it's always been that okay well this is what i'm doing i need to give it my full and then the youtube was just kind of um yeah it was like it was my passion and then when i would yeah. get stressed about it because i would you know you i I, do, I wonder if you also have this do you also compare um yourself because there's so many people doing it and do you, yeah. do you find that a bit yeah. of a challenge or how do you kind of I do. So, um, so for me, I've been doing desserts for so long online and that's how I found success. I found success by doing the over the top colorful, crazy desserts. And so in the last maybe six months, I've done a complete shift into everyday cooking and everyday recipes rather than just desserts. And, uh, so I'm, I'm finding myself in a completely different space and like a headspace in a different space in the food online community. And I found myself more and more comparing myself to others because what I was doing before with desserts, I felt very confident. I, I was very focused on things that inspired me and that's not how my content works for me anymore. I'm more, trying to figure out what it is that people want to be making during the week or what they want to make during the weekend or what do they want to learn how to make? What are the food trends that are happening right now? And then you look at other creators and you're like, how are they doing things differently? Or why did they make a change? Like, what is it that they're doing that works? And so I am finding myself like looking at a lot of what other people are doing and taking inspiration from that. But you can get caught up in comparing and it making you feel a little bit unmotivated, a little bit down. Um, but I think, yeah, I've been doing this for six years. So I've gotten into a habit of getting myself out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Actually, I wanted to ask you two things. Firstly, um, how yeah. come you decided to move uh, beyond showing desserts and second I, I think I read that your whole the book that you wrote it was kind of a way to rebel against all of these uh, of people doing a bit of the same thing so I was just wondering yeah. how you kind of in your food how you kind of incorporate that because sometimes with food like with desserts you can be so creative and I wonder is it yeah. you like it's the same for food as well um so it's for me, it's not the same experience for desserts. Uh, so the way it would work for me is like, I would feel inspired by anything. It could be a color. It could be a song. Often it would be like a Beyonce, Rihanna, mm -hmm. Gaga song that would inspire me. And that would kind of inspire the dessert that I was designing and making. Um, but what I'm doing now, it doesn't work like that for me. I'm more, focused on creating like a large library of recipes that people can come to. Um, and so when they think I need a pizza recipe, I need a pasta recipe, I need a salad recipe, whatever it is, there's obviously a lot of people online doing what I'm doing right now as well. But I want my audience on social media to think, Oh, okay. Nick has a recipe for that. So that's, rather than creating content that's very trendy and very like in the moment and works, you know, at that time that it's posted, I want to create content that's like evergreen that in five years time, people are going to be able to come back to and be like, okay, Nick has that recipe. I want to go and make that, you know, that kind of thing. So that's kind of the shift that I made. Um, I felt a little bit burnt out with the desserts as well. Like, it, it's a lot of fun doing that type of content, but I realized that it it can be a bit exhausting having to keep on top of trends and like constantly having to 
outdo yourself and yeah. you don't, you know, your audience starts to expect things to be leveled up each time you release a dessert and you can't just do something simple because that's not what they yeah. want. So for me, it's kind of like a new challenge. I haven't really done regular cooking videos before. Mm -hmm. So I'm finding out that a pizza doesn't really look great after five minutes. So you need to like, you know, there's, it's, it's a big new learning experience for me. Yeah. And do you, yeah. do you are you also, um, are you also taking insp a bit of inspiration? Cause you uploaded a video with your grandmother and I thought that was really yeah. sweet. And you also mentioned that it's one of your favorite videos. So I was wondering, do you also try to incorporate that background uh, in your, in your food now? Yeah, I do. Um, so that that's probably my favorite video that I've ever made. My uh, my grandma, she uh, had a garden every single year. And the year before she passed away, I wanted to sit with her in her mm -hmm. garden. And I wanted to ask her about food because my grandma and my mom, while I was growing up, we had all this incredible food. And I grew up around food and that's how we all bonded. So I, I just wanted to sit down and do like a simple interview with her. But I sat down and actually discovered all this stuff I didn't know about it before. Like how food influenced her upbringing, how her religion influences her food choices. Um, and uh, so that, that I'm so glad I did that video because a year after that, she passed away. Um, but I do take a lot of, at the moment with the new direction, I'm kind of still in the figuring out stage of what works with my audience and what it is that I want to do because everyone has to have a niche. Mm -hmm. You can't necessarily just do anything and everything because people need to grab onto something. Um, but I've, I've started doing a couple of different Greek recipes because I grew up with those recipes. I'm confident with them. Um, yeah. So that's kind of, yeah, I, I do take a little bit of inspiration yeah. from, from that. Yeah. And I guess it's also nice to do a bit of savory food because then I think when you have desserts always at your house, then you feel like, I feel like you yeah. always eat them in any case. And it's actually such yes. a struggle because you have to test things and you have to take pictures and you <laughs> just end up eating so much without even realizing yeah. that you're eating them. So I guess what's you know, really nice because there's, yeah. only, there's only so much my neighbors can yeah. eat, like so much desserts <laughs> before not even they want them. I remember when I used to live at home, I, I lived at home when I first started the cupcake stuff on, on the scrand line and my mum had chickens. It got to a stage where not even the chickens wanted <laughs> cupcakes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good. Um, but then like there's always food in my house and I feel like I'm, as long as I do this job, I'm always going to have like yeah. temptations and yeah. yeah. And, and do you, be food. besides your neighbors, is there like some kind of, uh, what do you do with all of the things that you prepare that you can't eat yourself? Well, I don't answer that question online, honestly, mm -hmm. because especially back when I did desserts, because people would be outraged with the real answer, but because you've asked and I'm done with the desserts, I feel I'm in a safe space. <laughs> so I, so back when I used to do the dessert stuff, I, it, it could, because that was so over the top, it could take me five days to actually film the recipe, like filming a recipe and just making it without a camera, two completely different things. And it takes so much longer to film a recipe. So there were some cakes that took five days to make. And by the end of those five days, yeah. that cake was edible. It just wasn't nice. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what I made went the in the bin. Um, and about, but a, a fair bit of it went to like neighbors or all the good stuff went to the neighbors. Yeah. That's also what um, I think. Yeah. yeah. But uh, food, a lot of it lives in the freezer. A lot of it, uh, is given to family friends now. Okay, yeah, that's nice. No, it is. It is a really. It is a big struggle with desserts. I think food yeah. is a bit easier, but desserts. I also know. No, yeah. If you because also if you make something that you don't like, you don't want to give it to other people because you're like, well, why would I, I give something that 
I don't like to anyone else. Um, so yes, yeah, I, I have that rule. If it's if if I don't like it, I won't give it to someone because uh, yeah. I've made that I made that mistake uh, maybe twice, and it's a horrific experience. It's yeah. mortifying. No. I once made a dessert. I once made a dessert that I hadn't actually made before, and I was having a dinner party and I served it at the dinner party and I served everyone and then I tasted it and it was so gross. I like ran to everyone and snatched the plate away from them. I'm like, you are not eating this. It is disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but, and then I was like, the next time you guys see me, I'm going to, um, what's the word? Uh, fix this. Yeah. I'm going to redeem myself. Mm -hmm. uh, which I did yeah so actually based on that I was gonna ask what is the most challenging part of your job do you think is it the comments or no it's not at all um it was in the beginning I so the pod I, I have this podcast we can we can chat about that a little bit later but I I have this podcast with someone who I used to be a huge fan of and now has become a friend her name is Elise Strawn from My Cupcake Addiction and she once told me, I mean, it's common sense, but just block the people, like block them if they start trolling you. Um, I, at one point, a couple of years ago, came out to my audience and that started a wave of comments. And then like people will comment on everything. When I first started this job, I used to bite my nails <laughs> and I haven't bitten my nails for six years because of the comments. <laughs> But but for me, um, I I've it doesn't it doesn't really bother me at all to be honest. I actually, it's probably not a good thing, but I actually have fun engaging with some <laughs> trolls. Yeah. Um. Someone someone was trolling me the other day, and I just like replying back with random things. So I said I I don't know what it was that they were saying, but I just replied back with a quote from The Office. Um, <laughs> yeah, I said to them, what is the, what is the exchange rate of shrimp bucks to Stanley Nichols, which makes no sense, mm -hmm. but yeah. And then they blocked me, which is great. Um, but the hardest thing for me, the hardest thing for me is because I do this full time, it's trying to balance work life, um, and personal life. Mm -hmm. This nobody tells you this but this job drains mm -hmm. not the life out of you like I love this job it's the best yeah. job I've ever had but you work so much yeah. like yeah. especially if you're doing this on your own mm -hmm. you're doing everything like you're doing no, the photography, yeah. the filming, yeah. recipe testing developing online stuff editing mm -hmm. it's like it's a huge I job yeah. um so for me it's probably the thing I don't struggle with it. It's more you have to stay very organized to make sure that yeah, yeah things get yeah. done. Otherwise, you fall behind and you uh, stop putting up content that makes everything suffer. Yeah, that happened to me, I think. Yeah. It's yeah. just like, because I mean, I really admire you for doing all of this full time and being able to upload every week because I feel like even if I do one video a month for me, that's like, okay, wow. I, because yeah. it does take a long time. You have to edit it. You have to upload it. You have to edit the pictures and yeah. photography is a yeah. huge thing. So I really yeah. like. I really want to make my pictures look good, and that also takes yeah. a lot of energy. So and then you yeah. upload it, and it's a bit of an anticlimax in a way because you're like, oh, now I just wait for. Yeah. I know. Yeah, and um, I guess like the other thing that I I find a little bit tricky with this job is how to feel like how to deal with disappointment like mm -hmm. sometimes you have like just like you said you have expectations for a particular a particular piece of content like the way that it's going to perform or you think people are going to really love it and it doesn't do so well so the thing is like when you work on your own doing this job you have to be the one that peps yourself up mm -hmm. there's no one else that's going to do that for you so that's something that I have to do every day like rather than feeling down, which I have those days, but you have to be the one that says, okay, get over it. What can you do differently? What wasn't working about that video? What are the changes you're going to make? 
yeah, yeah. exactly that's really good uh, that's, those are yeah. really good tips as well and do you think that at some point you would get some help with editing and things like that um so i actually got an editor um who i so i i upload two pieces of content on my socials every week at the moment and i'm thinking of upping it to three a week um and i have someone editing one video a week for me which actually takes a huge load off Uh um because again like doing this job you have to constantly be finding you can't just do one thing like you have to be looking for different ways to make an income you can't just rely on social media to be your income um so yeah i have an editor it took me a very long time for me to feel comfortable doing that because i am very particular about the way i want things done but luckily i've found someone who doesn't mind my 20 notes per video mm-hmm. um yeah, yeah that's great no, that's yeah i think i also add a bit of help with editing and it, it does save so much time and then you actually yeah. want to do because i think like at least for me it's like i love baking and that's my that's my passion and the editing is like it's something you have to do but yes. i really like yeah. the baking and the photography the rest i'm like yeah oh. same i love my favorite part is photography and now that i'm doing like every like cooking all different types of things i can't i'm not photographing the way i was because all of my stuff was photographed against like colored backgrounds Mm -hmm. and now i'm having to find i'm having to come up with a completely different style for my brand Mm -hmm. so i'm i'm having you know having to figure out how to use props how to use lighting how to use you know how to how to do things completely differently so it's like i'm starting all over again yeah but the photography is something i've always like it's been one of my favorite parts of this yeah. job and you i mean yeah. with your background in graphic design there like just the way even i think just the way you style everything is so aesthetic so yeah. the pictures you know once you have the styling down the pictures are a bit like they're just secondary exactly yeah yeah you have to if you're uh, you probably have this tip as well but you have to um you have to make sure that you do you get things right when you're taking the photo rather than relying on Mm-hmm. post editing there's only so much you can do on photoshop to make something look good you have to make sure that you're getting it right when yeah. you're photographing yeah yeah no yeah. that's fair <laughs> um yeah. and besides the yeah. website you have a podcast and you have a bunch of other yeah. things. i wanted to ask you what is what else are you doing besides the videos and what is kind of like your direction or your dream with with what with you, what you're doing um, so I have this new podcast with um, Elise Strawn from another YouTube channel called My Cupcake Addiction, who was one of the first YouTubers I ever started following on YouTube. And uh, her and I have these really long conversations about once a month. And we just, the entire time, we just laugh. It feels like a therapy session. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I kind of said to her, we should turn this into a podcast. We, re- we recorded it back in January 2020. We sent it to Spotify and they loved it. So we uh, launched with them as a Spotify original. And it's basically a baking podcast, but it's not like we're not talking about recipes and we're not talking about like baking itself. We're looking at the funny side of baking. Um, like, for example, I always... Anytime anyone says to me, what's the podcast about? It's like a funny baking podcast. And I always give this example. It's like, we answer questions like, what if Nutella ran out tomorrow? Or Mm -hmm. um, just like ridiculous, silly stuff. So it's it's a fun podcast that you can listen to while you're driving, while you're baking. Elise loves to throw in these things that we call rando dad facts. Mm -hmm. So that you do actually come away having learned something. Okay. Sometimes yeah. it's something really silly or yeah. So it's, it's a fun podcast. It comes out every week beginning January 29th and it comes out every, yeah, every week. And um, yeah, it's on Spotify for anyone that wants to listen. Yeah. I'll put, I'll leave, you can send me the links and I'll put them yeah. below the video as well. Yeah. Awesome. And, and what else do you have coming up? So uh, right now the big focus is the, uh, the new website and then uh i've got some i'm hoping to release an ebook this year uh we're working on merch 
Um, yeah, just just kind of for me, like I can feel overwhelmed when I'm trying something new. So I try to like not do too much and just focus on getting the foundations right. So that's kind of what this year is going to be about for me. Just yeah. making like setting everything up. Yeah, I'm really excited yeah. to see the merch, though. I'm sure it's going to be thank you. Going to be gorgeous. Yeah, thank you. Um, and also, actually, I wanted to ask you one last question. So you yeah. also use your platform for discussing issues around the world that you think are yeah. um, important. And I think that's really, really inspiring yeah. and really great that you do that. Because I think for someone yeah. who does baking, it's really hard to uh, address these issues because you don't want to, you know, draw any controversy or negativity. So, um, I, yeah. yeah, I wanted to ask you, why did you decide to do that? And um, will you continue doing that as well? Um, so I, I used to do it a lot more a couple of years ago than what I do now, but back when Trump was elected in America, um, I started paying at attention a lot more to politics and I started learning about what's actually happening in the world. Um, and I started learning things about myself as well. And for me, like I've learned, I am someone who believes in progressive values and I believe in uh, equality for all genders, for all people, you know, um, economic equality, the equality of, of people's living circumstances and all that kind of thing. So for me, it became difficult to not say anything. And for me, I think what's important is that you find your own voice when you're building your brand and that you express yourself. And I, I am known as someone who does baking, even now with the new direction, I'm still known as someone that does baking. But I think it was important for me, especially around the time that I came out to my audience to express my disappointments in things that are happening in the world or um, to make people aware of different things, to show the injustices or to show the positive things that are happening. Um, and it's not for everyone. There are definitely people in the baking space online that don't do that at all. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't begrudge those people, but I think you can't, you can't, um, you can't just stay silent about everything. No. That's that's the way that that injustices progress. Yeah. You have to you have to bring attention in the best way that you can. Uh, sometimes for me, especially in the beginning, I would let my frustrations kind of overwhelm me, and that would spill out onto Instagram stories or even into my Instagram feed or just online generally but now I've kind of realized that's not the most productive way to uh to interact with your audience and let them know about things so I think yeah I think for me it's important I would say generally everyone should be doing that but not everyone can or should like feels that they can do that so yeah yeah yeah, yeah I think my my thing was that I feel like um I don't know as much as I should about this, so I shouldn't be saying things. But, you know, for example, when there were elections in Poland, we went to vote because I'm a Polish citizen. And I was really yeah. happy about that because it's, it was a huge thing, you know, even yeah. though it didn't necessarily go the way that. Uh, yeah. So but anyway, that was that was something I shared. And it's funny because I study law. My, so really? I, should be, I awesome. should be. Yeah, like I should be. And I'm doing research, so I should be like sharing these things. But I think I was just. I think it's just a bit scary sometimes because you're also you're putting yourself out there in a way that you know that people can yeah yeah criticize. It, it, it invites yes it invites people's criticism it invites people unfollowing you which it, again like it can be something that gets you down because obviously like when you're building an online brand it's all about growth but uh for me for example like when i came out as gay I was already out in my personal life for a couple of years before I decided to do it online. And for me, what motivated me, what what in, kind of made me feel like it was the right thing to do was we started having um, something called a plebiscite here in Australia. And it was essentially 
the government was asking every citizen to vote on whether marriage equality should be a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it felt so wrong because yeah. why should someone else's opinion about my personal life, like why should yeah. they have the right to yeah. decide something? And, and the biggest thing for me is like youth suicide was so tragic at that time. And it just felt like there were so many young people following me that I felt like people needed to know about it. People needed, you know, young people needed to feel like they could feel safe, that they could express themselves. Like for me, when I first realized I was gay, YouTube was one of the biggest things that got me through all of the depression and all of the figuring things out. And so if, so that's kind of why I feel like it's important to speak up because someone is experiencing poverty. Someone is experiencing uh, like an injustice, like spousal abuse or financial abuse or financial strain or depression an eating disorder. You know, someone who's following you is experiencing these things. So if you can, if you can just say something that day, you know, it makes someone feel like they're not alone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, and in, the, in the case of like politics, there are a lot of people that don't know a lot about politics. Like there are a lot of people, a lot of people, our generation who don't know anything about it. They weren't taught it. They weren't taught to be interested in it. You know, they've been taught that it's okay to ignore it. Don't worry about voting. And we're seeing in America now that people, our generation are like, we need to vote because that's the only way stuff gets done yeah no I think that I think actually speaking to you I'm like maybe it is good because I always try to stay clear of all of these things just because I was always always like I don't want to be I don't want my personal life or my personal views to kind of show through I want it to be about the baking but speaking to you I'm like I think it is also sometimes good to address even the fact that with this whole pandemic it is not easy for people and like personally it wasn't easy for me when I was alone in Holland and it's I think it is important to share those things because you're not alone with those yeah yeah like the thing is like the internet has a lot of negative sides to it but it has also opened the world up so that we don't feel alone like you look at the Black Lives Matter movement and the internet has started this huge conversation and there are black teens who feel like they can follow a black creator and they can feel inspired by that person. They, that person gives them a voice. They educate their black followers. Um, You know, even women in certain countries who don't have as many rights in more developed countries, they can follow a creator like you or another female creator and feel like she's doing she's doing something for herself so why can't I go and get educated or why can't I get interested in baking and do what she's doing Mm -hmm. kind of thing yeah so I feel like I think it's important for me personally like I've made that decision for me but I I don't know that it, it doesn't mean that everyone should if they feel like they can't yeah no I I think there's some things that you can do and I think whatever whatever you can do you should so I think yes yeah 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 so I know it's really nice because I think I don't I don't actually get the opportunity to talk to a lot of people from YouTube it's so nice to speak with you as well and just yeah it's so yeah thank you for for having the chat and it's really lovely to meet you yeah Um, same same for me because I know we had I think we were messaging at some point for the Christmas collaboration and then it didn't happen but in any case it was really nice to reconnect with you um that yeah you too um but yeah thank you so much for having me on and I'm I'm looking forward to to keeping in touch Um, yeah for sure I if you have five minutes I wanted to ask some questions but you can answer them in one word like a really quick fun thing to end the end the talk so yeah Okay, so there's just a few questions. You can just answer it in one word. Okay, so are you a morning, noon, or night person? Oh, night. And yeah. you, can't, you can't live without? Bread. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, your favorite utensil is? Spatula. Yeah, I also agree. Yeah. And yeah. Your, uh, your most used emoji? 
a purple love heart. It's funny. I would think it would be a yeah. cupcake. <laughs> no, actually, I remember when the cupcake one came out and I was like, this is so exciting, but I don't actually use it that much. Okay. <laughs> you are yeah. currently reading... Um, I'm not reading anything right now. I'm watching a lot of Everybody Loves Raymond Mm -hmm. um, while I edit or while I'm like before bed, but I'm a huge Harry Potter fan Mm -hmm. and I've read the Harry Potter books about 20 times, um, but I'm in, in the market to start reading new stuff. Okay. So any recommendations are good then? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your favorite dish to make sweet or savory? Um... It's a, it's such a, it's such a hard one to answer that one. I get asked that all the time. If I'm talking sweets, red velvet cupcake, cream cheese, frosting. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. what, what is one piece of advice you would tell your 10 year old self? Uh, don't, don't worry too much about what other people say or think because it, most of it doesn't matter. <laughs> and yeah. when you are not baking you are oh, doing all of the other stuff that we listed earlier photographing editing <laughs> emails endless emails mm-hmm. yeah yeah all right nick that's all i have for you thank you so much and also for staying because i said it would be 10 to thank 15 you. minutes but no, it no, this was a lot of fun this was yeah. so much fun. Yeah, I hope that people enjoy this. And thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, and thanks so much for talking to me. I really hope we can also yes. stay in touch. Um, and yes. I'm really excited to see everything that you have coming up and also to listen to your new podcast. Thank you so much.